All right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today in my studio. We're hanging out today kind of talking about microphones. I uh, was just finishing up a couple of different projects. You can see I got my instruments and a couple of microphones strewn about. I got to play my banjo back there for uh, a tune that we just recorded the other day. It was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, anyway, looking forward to doing some more stuff with that this week. But today we're talking a little bit about microphones, and um, I just wanted to pass along some tips and tricks uh, for those who are, you know, on the go, where, you know, maybe you're doing, you know, four, five, 12 meetings in a day and uh, traveling from place to place, and you got a travel rig, and you just got to be able to plop down and go. Um, uh, and so I just wanted to give you some tips and tricks to help you get the best possible quality sound and product uh, without a lot of effort on your end because, you know, workflow is so important and being able to just sit down and go without having to think too much about the technology. Um, there's something really valuable in that. Uh, I implement that in all of my workflows and I highly encourage uh, folks to, you know, just generally understand your technology to a point where you can kind of sit down and not have to think about it. Um, so we have, um, this microphone right here is what you're hearing me through. This is a microphone made by Shure. It's what's called a condenser microphone, uh, which is similar to the Tula mic that uh, we have purchased for some folks out in the field. Uh, what's different about this microphone, though, is that this microphone uses a standard mic cable connection, and then that mic cable is going, I hit the mic, sorry, uh, to my audio interface, which is plugged into my computer, and then that is how the sound is getting into my computer. Now, for you, you're probably going to have a microphone um, that has a USB connection, that you can use to plug into your computer as opposed to a proper mic cable. So in that case, if you have a USB cable that plugs into your computer or phone, um, incidentally, if it's a USB-C type connection, most of those units can be plugged into a phone um, or mo other mobile device. Really, really cool. Um, super love that. It saved me a bunch doing um, field recordings, little videos and stuff out on, on the go. Um, yeah, so yours might be a little bit different. Uh, the basic principles are the same. So I just want to talk first about um, directionality, uh, the types of microphone patterns, because I believe, for instance, the Tula mic that we've sent out in the field has two different ones. We want to make sure we're using the right one for sort of picking up the maximum me and the least amount of all of whatever else is going on in the room. Um, and then I also just wanted to talk a little bit about positioning the microphone um, to help reduce things like pops and clicks and extra <laughs> type sounds getting into the microphone. Uh, so that way you just get a clean, nice signal um, and without having to do a lot of extra on the back end and everybody's happy, the people you're talking to are happy and so on and so forth. So this microphone has a couple of different patterns and right now I have it in cardioid pattern. Um, and what that means is that there is a bubble around this microphone. This is the front of the microphone. Um, and that bubble sort of extends this way, sort of this way. Um, and behind this microphone, is where it's going to be rejecting sound. So if I have a keyboard or stuff on the desk here, it's not going to be picking that up as much as it will. Ooh, hit the mic. I'm really sorry. Uh, as if as the things that are coming out in front of me. Um, and you'll see on most units that there's a little um, that have uh, multi patterns. So you'll have, see a little shape that sort of looks like a little heart. Cardio, cardioid. That's that's all that means. Um, now this microphone also has what's called an omnidirectional pattern. Um, and the Tula mic, I believe, also has that as well. So I just wanted to talk about those two different modes. Omnidirectional just merely means this capsule will pick up equally in all directions. So it'll pick up everywhere around as opposed to just sort of this way. Um, and for interviews where maybe you're setting the thing down on the table and you have two or three people around a table, an omnidirectional microphone is really useful. The other place an omnidirectional microphone is really useful is if you're out in the field in a particularly noisy environment and you need to get that microphone basically right up to your mouth. Uh, here's why. Um, when you have a directional microphone, a microphone that is, um, you know, 
picking up sound in one direction. There's a thing called proximity effect. So I'm going to get a little bit loud, but watch what happens to the low end of my voice as I get to about an inch or so below closer to the microphone. And then as I back up, the low frequencies in my voice are going to kind of disappear. That's proximity effect. So if I get about an inch or closer to this microphone, it's going to unnaturally increase that sort of low frequency. Um, and you'll notice that uh, you'll, you'll notice that radio hosts and broadcasters will often do that intentionally with like a sure SM. 7B type microphone, like the NPR style microphone. They'll get right on the phone um, and give you that nice beefy bassy tone. Sometimes you want it, most of the time you don't. So for cardioid microphones, um, keeping a distance of about, you know, I think I am probably a foot away from this thing. This is kind of the optimal place to be. Um, if I get farther away, it's still going to pick me up, but now I'm going to start sounding a little bit more roomy. I'm still kind of in the pattern of this thing. Now, if I move over to this side, over here, you're going to notice I'm not being picked up as much. Um, and in fact, apologies for the handling noise, but this is the other thing I wanted to talk about with the pattern. So I'm going to just move this over here. And I want to show you what happens with this polar pattern as we move to the other side. And you can do this with your microphone at home. You can just kind of go while you're listening and figure out where the back side of this thing is. The front side is usually going to be the part that has a logo on it. So mine has a logo on this. So this is what's this called a side address microphone. Same type of thing as the Tula. So uh, as I turn this, and pardon the noise, I'm going to turn this around. And you're going to notice that I don't sound nearly as clear, and I sound probably a lot more roomy, um, because what's happening is the microphone is picking up the sound that's actually bouncing off of there and coming back into the front, and not as much from back here. So I just wanted to show you what happens when you do the back side of the microphone when you are in a cardioid pattern. Okay. I'm going to hit this switch and we're going to do Omni real quick and I'll show you the same thing. Now we are in omnidirectional mode. So this means that I should be able to go onto any side of this microphone, any side of this microphone, and it will pick me up equally in all directions. The other thing that you'll notice is as I get real close to this microphone, and I'm intentionally speaking a little bit more quietly because I don't want to blow out your ears. Uh, as I get closer to this microphone, I am no longer getting those increased bass frequencies that we heard with the directional pattern. Very useful stuff. Okay. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is pop filter. You'll notice this little thing that I have on the front of my microphone. These are about I think eight or ten dollars. They make them for most microphones that are in this shape. They also have a type that you know clips on and has a little screen in front. Well, what is a pop filter? What does a pop filter do? Well, if you take your hand and you put it in front of your mouth, right about here, and you know, say some stuff. Let's just make some speech. You'll notice that there is a blast of air that comes out of uh, your mouth here as you're saying different kinds of words. Now, that blast of air will get into the little holes inside of this microphone and hit, there's a, there's a diaphragm that is picking up the sound and oscillating as the sound waves, the sound pressure waves are hitting it. Well, that blast of air is also going to hit that diaphragm and cause it to move a lot. And that gets you these sort of <gasps> sounds in um, your audio when, when you're doing a capture like that. So a pop filter is a really useful thing to have. In the absence of a pop filter, what you can do is position the microphone so that that blast of air is going above or below or somewhere that is not directly in the path of the microphone. And you can actually see that I've kind of done that because I'm speaking forward. So that blast of air is going this way and the microphone is actually pointing up towards my mouth at about this 45 degree angle, you can kind of see the line right here on the capsule. That's that's the direction that it's going. Um, and so by positioning the microphone from the side and sort of at my mouth, I'm able to get a really good capture. Now, the downside of this position is whatever is on that side, it's going to pick up too. So sometimes I have some noisy things on a, out of a window that's over there. Um, and so I might want to do a positioning that is more 
directly at my mouth. The problem with that now is, now I've got this blast of air that is focused towards this microphone. And so, I can do one of a couple of things. Um, I can raise it and bring it down. Pardon the noise. I can raise it and aim it down at my face. And this boom arm only goes so far, so we'll have to do this. So that I'm speaking below it and this plosive blast of air is now passing under the microphone. Um, and yet, because sound radiates equally in all directions from a source, AKA my mouth, um, it's gonna get into this microphone in the same way that it was as if it were off to the side. You can do the same thing by going below and pointing up. So I'm going to now bring this down here and we're gonna do something like that. And now uh, I am able to speak forward. I'm getting the same benefit as I had with the microphone sort of over here, uh, except it's pointing up at my face. You can see that the line is going like this while the plosive energy is moving this way and not getting into the microphone. You don't have a fancy boom arm. You got a thing that sits on a desk, no problem. We got, we got, we got a solution for that too. You got books laying around. I have books laying around. Um, Grab a couple of books. You can, you know, stick your microphone on a couple of books on a table and then, you know, sort of point it up at your face. Um, I recognize that most people aren't going to be able to get... Ooh, I should fix my position before I continue. Okay. Um, I recognize that most people aren't going to be able to have a fancy boom arm, particularly if you're traveling, you know, and you're just pulling your stuff out of your pocket and you're having to go... Uh, and so, you know, the best best practice, if you can get your my mouth, you know, about a foot away is ideal. If you have to be two feet away, that's okay too. That's about the distance from me to the desk. But what you will notice is that with every doubling of distance, so say I'm, say I'm this far away, and then I move to double this distance, which is going to be about this far away, um, you lose six decibels of energy. So there's actually this halving. It's, it's half of the power, the amount of power. It's this sort of, if you imagine a balloon, if you're filling up a balloon, and the surface of that balloon, it only has so much surface, but it gets stretched thinner and thinner and thinner as you go out sort of equally in all directions. The same kind of thing happens with sound. And so about a foot is sort of the magic number, but you'll notice that if I go to two feet, it's still kind of okay, but I start to get a little bit quieter. Um, and so anyway, this is probably the land you will be living in if you have a thing that is on a desk. Now notice, I'm probably gonna still hear some of it. Notice that as I'm kind of hitting my desk and moving stuff around and you hear it, but I'm not hearing the handling noise on the microphone. That is something that you're going to uh, hear if you have a stack of books and a microphone on top of a stack of books. So you just want to be cognizant of if I have a microphone that is not, this is what called is called acoustically decoupled because I have these little rubber bands that are sort of sh keeping it from receiving the vibrations that are traveling through the things it's standing on. Um, if you have a microphone that is on a surface, just be aware that if you're, you know, doing a lot of pounding and stuff with your hands and things on that surface, the microphone is going to pick it up. And usually it's going to be lower frequency stuff, um, and we can deal with a lot of that, but just something to be aware of. Okay, I'm going to pause here. Those are some general mic techniques. I want to talk specifically about the Tula next, um, and so we're going to do that now and I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to make a second video specifically regarding the Tula. And I hope that this has been helpful.